Now welcome uh, class, welcome. This is question two of the April 2022 economics paper. And we are just doing the revision to help you uh, in answering some of these uh, exam questions. So with the aid of appropriate diagrams, describe three properties. With the aid of appropriate diagram, discuss three properties of um, three properties of indifference curve. Now indifference curve is uh, one of the theories. Uh, we have the utility theory and then we have the indifference curve theory, the indifference uh, curve theory, uh, the indifference theory that explains the consumer behavior. It explains the consumer behavior. We have just two major theories. So the we we'll go straight to the to the, uh, the to the question. Although there is quite a lot that we can talk about this, but for the sake of it, we'll go straight to the question and answer it. So, with the aid of appropriate diagrams, describe three properties of indifference curves. Now, the first property of indifference curve is that indifference curves must never cross. Indifference curve must never cross each other cross or intersect. Indifference curves must never intersect. Normally when we plot an indifference curve, we assume two sets of uh, commodities and different combinations. So we can talk of commodity X and commodity uh, say Y, commodity Y on the Y axis. We have these two sets of commodities and the individuals uh, have bundles of uh, how they can uh, they, their preferences so this is uh, roughly how the indifference curves will run this is how the indifference curves will run with the different uh, bundles that is how the indifference curves look like so we have indifference curve uh, uh, say uh, a we have b we have c these are indifference curves and it is this indifference curve that we are saying must never intersect so we, must, we cannot have a situation where and one indifference curve cuts across the other one this one cannot happen and uh, that is one of the properties of uh, indifference curves should it happen then what that means is that uh, uh, actually it will create a lot of uh, ambiguity uh, as to what the true utility is because individuals have a, a, a clear set of preference it's an assumption that they have a clear set of preference so crossing when one indifference cap crosses the other it basically creates a lot of confusion on what the true utility of that uh, particular individual or uh, product is so the that is the first rule indifference curves must never cross or intersect uh, that is how indifference curves should run then the second uh, property is that uh, the further the indifference curve, the further the indifference curve, the further the indifference curve is from the origin, is from the origin, the further the indifference curve is from the origin, the higher the utility, the higher the utility, which means this, the utility of this person uh, who is operating at indifference curve C is higher than the utility it, it derives a lot of uh, uh, satisfaction of utility than the person who is operating at indifference curve a that is what the second uh, property means that the further the indifference curve is from the origin the higher the uh, utility uh, then the third uh, uh, the third uh, the third uh, trying to create space sorry for that sorry the third uh, property of indifference curves is that indifference curves have slope downwards indifference curves slope downwards and there's a reason why indifference curves slope uh, downwards. Uh, the reason is very simple, that the only way an individual can increase the consumption of one commodity is by losing 
uh, consumption of the other uh, commodity. Uh, so, uh, for you can see at this point, what this means is that we have we are consuming this number of uh, y commodity y one and this number of x one. But at this level, we are consuming this number of y commodity and this number of x commodity so when we decrease consumption of this we increase consumption of that so there's that element of decrease when uh, when we decrease the consumption of one we increase the consumption of the other or when we increase the consumption of the other we decrease the consumption of the other and that is what is creating this negative slope we say that this slope is negatively related it's indirect a direct one is where the we have a positive positive all of them are increasing like when we talk about the law of supply an increase creates an increase the law of demand an increase creates a decrease so it's the same thing here an increase and a decrease so the slope will uh, would, um, uh, the slope would uh, generally uh, go downwards like what we are seeing you can see it's sloping downwards to show that when we decrease the consumption of one commodity we increase the consumption of the other that is the whole essence of why these indifference curves are sloping downwards so indifference curves slope downwards that is the property and the reason why it slopes downwards is because uh, an individual can only increase consumption in one commodity uh, by losing out uh, the consumption of the other commodity. Then, uh, the fourth indifference curve is that uh, the indifference curves are convex to the origin. They are convex to the origin. Convex to the origin, this is what we are talking about. You remember in physics, there was something concave. This is concave concave and then this is convex convex the shape is like this con, con, convex is like this concave is like that so we talk of convex to the origin and you can see it's convex so this is convex convex so it's convex this is the origin point zero so it's convex to the origin and there's also a reason why it is convex to the origin so in different curves assume a convex shape and they are convex to the origin and uh, generally the curves uh, slope downwards which we have said they get flatter as you move down the uh, curve to the right the, those in different curves they get flatter as you and you can see they are getting flatter as you move downwards towards the Right. And there's a reason for that. That illustrates that all individuals experience diminishing marginal utility. That's a whole concept that you might need to find a time to go through it. Diminishing marginal utility, where additional consumption of another good will generate a lesser amount of utility than the prior uh, uh, commodity that you consume. So the, there are key... Uh, terms here that will help you understand this even better diminishing marginal utility and we also have another one the marginal rate of substitution you might want to check on these two uh, terms they will help you understand this uh, clearly but uh, the diagrams that with the aid of the diagram describe three properties of indifference curve these are the three properties and actually we've come up with four uh, and this is how the diagram should look like. The indifference curve must never cross each other, so you can show this. The further the indifference curve is from the origin, the higher the utility. You can explain using C, D, and A indifference curves. Then the indifference curves slope downwards. You can see, you can show uh, by using the diagrams, you can see they are actually sloping downwards and they also convex to their origin. You can see the shape and they tend to slope downwards as uh, they flat or towards the right so get to know uh, all those properties get to know why uh, those properties or rather the reasons to justify the properties that should be able to give you the nine marks 
Now, let's come to the part B of this question. With the reference to the theory of consumer behavior, with the reference to the theory of consumer behavior, highlight five assumptions of maximization of utility. With reference to the theory of consumer behavior, highlight five assumptions uh, of maximization of utility. Again, I'll go straight to the point. There is a lot we can talk about this, but I will go straight to the point. Number one on this assumption is that consumers are assumed to be rational. Consumers are assumed to be rational, which means that they can make informed judgments. The consumers can make informed judgments. They are assumed to be rational. And then the second one is that the consumer prefer more consumers prefer more prefer more that is they have this concept that more is better so given a chance they will continue and continue and continue uh, uh, consuming so more is better that is an assumption that consumers will always uh, uh, that is assumed on the consumers and then you also have another assumption that uh, Mix is better mix is better if you give them a variety they will prefer again that a variety they will prefer uh, The variety so mix is better uh, If we do if we have different choices uh, Then we can always go for those uh, choices that is also one of the assumptions and then the other assumption is uh, the assumption of uh, uh, clear preferences clear preferences clear preferences they have clear preferences like if i prefer product a to b to c automatically it means that i prefer product a to c that is the assumption of clear preference we assume that the consumers have uh, clear preferences they know very well uh, if they are given a certain set of goods which one will rank first which one will rank second which one will rank uh, third that's they know the, the marginal utility for each successive unit of a product then uh, we also have an assumption that the consumers consumers incomes are consumers incomes are limited Consumers' incomes are limited, and this is actually an assumption that uh, applies throughout the economy. To say that resources are actually scarce, and we have to make best use of them, and that is where we now talk about the preferences that they have a clear set of preferences. Given two sets of commodity, they can always tell you that they prefer this one to this one, and uh, basically it emanates from this particular assumption that they have uh, scarcity of resources. Their incomes are limited because their individual resources are limited. Generally, the assumption is that they face budget uh, constraints. And then uh, every there's also an assumption that every item, every item has a price tag. Every item has a price tag. That is also an assumption. Of course, this is what will bring in the element of. Uh, uh, you know preferences because every item has a price tag and we have the budget constraints the budgets always come in when we talk about the utilities and the point at which these people will operate their equilibrium and then um, maybe let me just see if we have another one uh, that can uh, otherwise there are some books which will talk about the assumption of non satiation they will always uh, want to satisfy their needs. We also have completeness, the assumption of completeness that uh, individuals can rank order all possible bundles. I think we'll, they will be captured here. But these are just some of the things you can get as you try to read uh, further. You will get that uh, the, the, the assumption of completeness and unsatiation of need, but we can just work with this rationality. They prefer more. Mix is better. Uh, they have clear preferences given a chance, uh, given options, and uh, they know how to rank their products. Then the consumer's incomes are limited or limited resources. And then every item has a price.
card. Those are some of the assumptions that you can work with in this particular question. Let's look at the third and last question. The examine three applications of the of consumer surplus in economies. Now, consumer surplus occurs is a concept uh, that occurs. Consumer surplus is a concept that occurs when individuals spend less than what they were actually ready to spend. They spend less than what they were actually ready and willing to spend. A consumer surplus happens when the price uh, that uh, consumers pay for a product uh, or service is less than the price they are willing to pay. So they spend less than what they are willing and possibly able to pay. So it basically shows the additional benefit that the consumer receives because they are paying less for something uh, than what they were actually willing to pay. That is what consumer surplus is. It occurs when a uh, consumer pays less than what he was ready to part with uh, for a certain good or uh, service. Now, that is not what the question is interested in. The question is interested in the three applications of the concept of consumer surplus in economies. But of course, starting with the, the definition is very important. It sets, it sets the pace for the entire uh, uh, question. Now, I think I have some, uh, some write-up here that uh, I'd like us to share, which is now, which will help us answer this question on, uh, which will help us answer the question on application of the concept. Just see if I have some write-up here that can help us. Just delete this. So the application, normally it's applied there uh, when we are determining, uh, talk, when we talk of things like policies, taxation, in international trade, those are the applications. So these are items that I found uh, to be very useful for this particular question. So we can just go through this right up uh, that will give us the applications of the concept of consumer surplus in economies. Now, uh, yeah, I've already mentioned uh, policies policies, uh, yeah. when the government makes decisions and frames policies. So this concept is very useful in policy formulation, especially by the government. And uh, uh, the policies might be in terms of, we could be talking about taxation, we could be talking about subsidies, subsidies, where this uh, whole thing applies. Generally, the yeah in fact we are talking also about the luxuries i think let's just go through what what we have here so that we can better understand uh, this we know that taxes are a source of revenue for the government so we have to understand what the consumer surplus may not we have to understand that the consumer surplus may not be the same for the different types of goods luxuries command a relatively higher consumer surplus uh, that makes a lot of sense uh, so for luxuries, the government could impose higher taxes, for example, and through this boost its revenues. Because luxuries, these people are going to enjoy. So in most cases, the enjoyment, the, or rather the, you know, the value that they are going to get for their money will be higher than what they have spent. So the government can come in and tax more. Because these people have uh, there is a feeling that they are going to get much from this uh, luxury. So that's where the government can tax a lot. That's how this concept comes in. Because people feel that they have said, or they have spent less than what they were actually supposed to spend. Why can the government come and take that extra amount that these people have said so that it can boost its revenue? I think you are now getting the how it comes in and you can read for more explanation. Secondly, for the business houses, consumer supplies may be of help in price fixation. These are business entities, especially when we talk about monopolies. Monopolies. So monopolies will want to maximize on the profits. Will want to maximize on the profits. So the moment they feel that the consumers are kind of, uh, they, 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 they are ready to part with more than what they are charging, they will simply increase the prices. And monopolies are very good at uh, price discrimination. So they look at the customer and then they judge you. If you look like you can spend more, they charge you highly than the, 
the, the, the, the, the others. And you can see it so that you don't, uh, they end up benefiting and not you. That's how we can apply this concept. It also helps us in understanding uh, certain facilities as well as certain commodities. Yeah, this is uh, the, the, the question of, uh, is it water? Water diamond paradox. This is uh, something very good. You might want to Google this. Just find more about water diamond paradox. Why water is cheap, yet uh, it's an essential in life. It's an essential, it's a necessity in life, yet very cheap. While diamond is very expensive, yet it's not essential in life. You see, you, that is the water diamond paradox. And it's explained in this concept, it's something that we might also want to look at it in detail. But that is also one of the applications of um, this consumer surplus uh, 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 concept. It explains why water is essential yet very cheap. Uh, unlike diamond, which is not a necessity, but very expensive. So consumer surplus also helps us in understanding how certain facilities as well as certain commodities are enjoyed by us at very less cost and the differences between these kinds of surpluses i think you can read that and at your own free time please read this to understand the concept better then number four uh so the answer lies here actually this is the answer it tells us to explain why you know some commodities are uh precious yet very yet uh, cheap that is where the answer lies. Then here it's monopolies. Then here we are talking about the government and the policies. Already those are three points. But we also have this other one. The aspect of international trade. Yeah. The aspect of international trade could also be looked from the consumer surplus point of view. Why? It explains. So this is the answer. This is the answer. Application of consumer surplus. It explains... Uh, why goods from foreign countries may be priced lower than goods which are domestic why goods uh, from foreign countries may be priced lower than goods which are domestic or why imported goods may be inexpensive than goods imported uh, than, 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 than imported goods which are purchased by the consumers so that also is one of the applications of uh, the consumer uh, surplus. And lastly, it explains why each and every economy aims to grow and to have stable growth. Consumer surplus also helps in evaluating the stability of an economy as higher surplus may point out better performance of the economy and vice versa. So this is yet the other application. So we have applica five applications of consumer surplus here. Just pick any and you'll be good to go. Thank you. Let's meet in the next question.